G'day guys, welcome back. Ooh. G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel at the conclusion of round one. And today's video is going to be about giving you my thoughts on the round that was. I thought it was a really good round actually, um, which is not a throwaway comment. I generally thought uh, we had some really exciting games this uh, this round, some less uh, than exciting and some really, really good games. And most importantly, I think it was a round where we saw a number of teams really make a statement uh, about where they're at in 2023. A couple of teams we weren't sure about. Uh, I think it was probably... Uh, probably four teams off the top of my head that really made a statement. You'd say Port Adelaide, you'd say North Melbourne to some extent, Collingwood made a statement, Essendon made a statement. It was really good. I feel like we learned a lot and it was a very entertaining first round and to be honest, it's just great having footy back. I really, really enjoyed being able to watch a fair bit of footy this weekend, even though my team lost. Um, but let's get into some of the review. Now the format will be uh, interesting, we're still kind of figuring that out for 2023 on True Footy, but uh, as much as possible I'm going to still try and do a round review every week. On top of that, we do have Druzy uploading content for the channel now and that should start this weekend as well. So previously, Druzy would do videos on his channel called Nine Things I Learned From uh, A Given Round. We're going to continue that on True Footy, so he's going to do that video each week on the True Footy YouTube channel and I'm going to still give you my review as well. The content has been coming thick and fast, and I c intend to continue that momentum going forward. Um, it's been really enjoyable, and most importantly, I've really enjoyed and uh, really appreciated the support from you guys as well. We're trickling closer and closer to that 20K mark. I did set a goal of hitting 20,000 subscribers by the time I left to go to America on the 10th of April. We're about 140-odd away from that number now as well, and uh, about 42% of the people who watch the True Footy YouTube channel over the last month have not subscribed. So if you are enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate it. If you hit subscribe, get me close to that 20K. But without further ado, let's get into the review of round one. So it started off with Carlton playing Richmond at the MCG, the uh, the typical season opener that went away for a year and is back. And it was a game that promised so much. And a little bit, it kind of fizzled a little bit, both in terms of the result and the actual spectacle. I mean, we all enjoyed footy coming, coming back and it was great to watch. But at the same time, I kind of expected a better performance from either of these sides, which I'm not saying has a... Uh, is forecasting how they're going to go this year. I expect both teams will be in the mix for finals, but by contrast to some other teams who performed really well in round one, both of these teams uh, were a little bit lackluster. I think the Blues led for most of the game, although I kind of thought Richmond were slightly more convincing of the two sides. I think they were just better at taking their opportunities. And eventually, of course, Richmond would level the scores with 17 seconds to go, thanks to Tom Lynch, to uh, notch up, I think, th certainly the first draw I've ever seen in the opening game of a season. Uh, I'd love someone with some stats to tell me when was the last time it happened. It was probably like the 30s. As I said, I thought Richmond were the slightly more convincing of the two teams uh, through the, particularly the first half, although it was Carlton who led by 10 points at quarter time. The inside 50s were 13 to 21 at quarter time, which showed Richmond's field territory dominance, but of course it was Carlton that was a little bit more efficient. The score was 30 to 16 at halftime, and while there were flashes of brilliance, it was uh, a bit of a tight tussle game. The Blues did look fast, particularly with some of their rebounds, uh, and Richmond were more so dominating possession, um, but some of their forward 50 entries weren't quite as clean. I do think both teams will be a little bit flat with that result. It is better than a loss, but uh, when you consider these two sides are probably competing for that five to eight range on the ladder, or at least it seems to me, um, this was a bit of an eight point game that went begging, but either way, Neither of them lost, which is good. On the positive side for some individuals, um, Tim Taranto debuted and had 32 touches for his new club. And Dan Rioli in particular, I thought was quite impressive off a halfback flank. He was probably their best on ground. He had 27 possessions. For the Blues, I was impressed by Hewitt, uh, Adam Sard as well, who was All-Australian last year, of course, had a uh, had a pretty good game with some running carry off the halfback flank. And Lewis Young as well, I thought did a solid job down back. I think we were treated to a much better game on the Friday night, at least in terms of a spectacle when Geelong took on Collingwood and the Pies got the job done by 22 points. And this was a real statement game between, you know, the reigning premiers of last year and Collingwood who got close to knocking off Geelong a few times last year, but would kind of stumble at the final hurdle. Uh, and they came out and won by 22 points and proved that last year is not a flash in the pan. They look like a very, very slick side. And they've continued that momentum into round one at least. The Cats did lead every change of this game, uh, but I think the Pies kicked the final eight goals of the game in a rampaging finish. 
and uh, very, very impressive and very important four points when you consider their top four prospects as well. Individually, I think Dacos had 35 touches. I got him in my fantasy team. Very happy with that. Dugowie also continued his sort of ascension into being a very, very good midfielder with three goals in addition to his 25 touches. Tom Mitchell debuted for the club. He had 21 and 2. And Bobby Hill in his first game for Collingwood as well had three goals. I think McStay was a little bit quiet. Only a handful of touches and one goal, but it's only one game. It's not a huge loss in the context of the season for the Cats, but it is disappointing to lose to what appears to be another contender for the flag this year. And the game did come at a cost for uh, a couple of individuals. Jeremy Howe's injury. Somebody sent me the link to it. I didn't see it at the time. I'm not going to click the link. It seemed disgusting. So hopefully he recovers all right, but he's going to be out for a while. Tom Stewart did a knee, and I don't think we have the prognosis on that. It wasn't like a serious ACL or anything like that, but uh, I think he's awaiting scans. And Sam DeConning, I think, had a bit of a scare for the Cats, but I believe he is a good chance to play in round two. So other than that, the Pies will be very, very happy to notch that win. The third game of the round was North beating West Coast by five points at Marvel Stadium. I won't give you a full review of that game because I've already done so in a previous video on the channel. So if you want to go see my in-depth thoughts about that particular game, both from a North and West Coast perspective, uh, go check out that video earlier this week. Then we had one of the biggest results of the round, at least I thought, in terms of uh, impressiveness of performance, and that was Port Adelaide, who rolled the Brisbane Lions by 54 points. And I did have a sneaking suspicion this would happen, certainly not by nine goals, but I did hit Port Adelaide, and I'm glad that they repaid my faith. It looked a little dicey early. The Lions uh, led the game by 18 points, and then the power went on to kick eight unanswered goals. And I think the exciting thing from a Port Adelaide perspective is, is I think this result was largely propelled by that sort of young gun nucleus that I've mentioned several times in this preseason. Uh, in particular, Jason Horn Francis had uh, his best game at AFL level in his first game for the club. He had 25 possessions, uh, I think 10 in that third term where the power really got on top, and five inside 50s as well. He was a real catalyst. Then you've got Connor Rosie continuing his ascension to being an AFL elite player, and Zach Butters is also very prominent as well. So I'm looking at Port Adelaide. Uh, in addition to Junior Rioli having a great first game for the club as well. That's a scary dynamic, seriously. And I feel a little bit validated because I kind of called it. They look like they could be a serious dark horse this year. For the Lions, uh, Rich was gallant in defeat. He had uh, over a 1,000 metres gained, which is impressive. We, we kind of come to expect that from Daniel Rich as a very good player. Gunston kicked two in his first game for the Lions. He's a player I've talked about in this preseason. And Josh Dunkley was a little bit quiet. But again, the, the Lions were a little bit shell-shocked in this game. And I don't think it's a massive loss in the context of their season. Of course, it's only round one. I do think the power is scary. So I think the Lions will be able to regroup. But something could be brewing at Port Adelaide. Then the Ds took on the Western Bulldogs again. The... Uh, the grand final replay of 2021. And this was sort of a statement as well, a little bit when you consider these two sides have a, a bit of a rivalry in terms of, you know, the fact they were grand finalists a couple of years ago. And, and it was the D's who came out and put the dogs to the sword. Again, it was a bit of a seesawing contest this game. I think uh, they were trailing in the second quarter of the D's and then five unanswered goals saw them never lose the lead from there. And it was a very convincing win in the end, largely driven by Petrarca and Oliver, who were typically... Um, you know, they're absolute guns. We know that. Uh, the Dogs did go into this game with four key forwards. That was much talked about. And the uh, Ds didn't have Stephen May. Uh, but that, the quartet of four talls, Norton, Ugle Hagen, Sam Darcy, and the new recruit Rory Lobb, they combined for just four goals. So not a very successful first outing uh, for that particular forward line. Cozzy uh, was fantastic in this game, kicked four goals, although he's been rubbed out for two weeks uh, for that hit. For the Dogs, uh, they had some good individuals. Liberatore was good. McRae and Trelaw, they all had 30-plus touches. They all kicked a goal, um, and they were gallant in defeat. Obviously, it wasn't enough. The Ds are too good. And in terms of the ruck combo of Gorn and Grundy as well, we saw Gorn still had a great fantasy game, which is uh, probably my biggest interest in his performance. 21 hitouts, two goals. Grundy had 12 hitouts, 17 possessions, and a goal as well. So they were productive, and it was a good first-up win for the Demons. For the Dogs, there's no shame in losing to Melbourne, although it was in a little bit more convincing fashion than they would have really liked. Then we head up to Metricon, where the Gold Coast Suns were shellacked by the Sydney Swans, losing 61 to 110, so about an eight-goal loss. And with Gold Coast history, or recent history, of upsetting the Swans, I did have a, a murky feeling that this would happen again, especially when you think Gold Coast could improve, and you feel like they're about to improve. But ultimately, it didn't come together in this game, and the Swans were far too good. The Swans kicked the first five goals of the game, and uh, kind of this contest was over before it really began. Their victory was really inspired by Chad Warner, Dane Rampey, uh, Errol Golden, 
Luke Parker, and I thought it was a really pleasing performance from Dylan Stevens as well, who had 27 touches and a goal. So the Swans will be happy with some development from the younger guys as much as anything. For the Suns, Jared Witts, uh, he had 25 possessions and 10 clearances as well. And I think he had 51 hitouts as well. So he battled pretty manfully in this game. And Raul had 28 possessions as well. I think Raul's always going to be this player we sort of watch with some sort of keen interest. He exploded onto the scene a few years ago, uh, and now he's slowly gaining momentum. So it's a step in the right direction for Matthew Rao. Ben King came into the side again, and in his first game, he was held to just five possessions, and uh, I think he kicked a goal as well. So it wasn't really a great night for the Gold Coast Suns, and the Swans notch up uh, an important percentage boost. Hey guys, I just want to interrupt this video for one brief moment to talk to you a little bit about Druzy's Athlete Academy. We're now in partnership with the True Footy YouTube channel as well. So if you're not aware, my good friend Druzy has launched his own online strength and conditioning coaching business. The service that he provides is online one-on-one -on -one coaching directed at young athletes who are trying to take their game to the next level. Drews has gone and got qualified as a sports scientist, and now he can provide professional strength and conditioning coach for anyone looking to take their fitness game to the next level. Whether you're a young prospective athlete who wants to level up, who wants to get drafted, or potentially you know play another sport to a very, very high level, your strength and conditioning is so central to that, and Drews can give you personalized programs tailored to your specific needs. But it's not just for athletes. If you're just someone who wants to get into the gym or perhaps has been going to the gym for a while and has started to stagnate, the benefit of Drewsy's Athlete Academy is that because he's a qualified sports scientist, you can take out all the guesswork and you can get personalized programs to help you fulfill whatever your goals are. There's running programs, there's gym beginner programs, there's muscle bulk programs. I know personally for me, I started getting into the gym about 10 years ago. I was a skinny little rat and some might say I'm still a skinny rat, but regardless, bulking up, getting a bit of muscle, feeling confident in my own fitness was the best thing I ever did. And I know that there's a huge correlation between how good I'm feeling in my general well-being and how strong and fit I'm feeling as well. So with the partnership you have through True Footy, you can get 20% off on any program at Drewsy's Athlete Academy. You simply just have to use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout on the website. So do go check out the website. The link for that is in the description. And remember, you get 20% off and you'll be investing in yourself. So it would be money well spent. Then we're on to the Sunday games where the Giants took on the Adelaide Crows. And this was actually a game I was intrigued to see how it would go. Uh, the Crows having a pretty good preseason and equally the, the Giants had one preseason game uh, where they had a big win as well. And the Giants sort of have the wood on over Adelaide a little bit as well. And uh, while I expected Adelaide to be a lot better this year, I thought there was a chance the Giants would beat them. And that's why I tipped the Giants. Uh, but the way it unfolded was quite bizarre when I first turned it on. The Crows were absolutely tearing them a new one. Uh, they led by 28 points. They should have led by more uh, at halftime when you consider they were four goals, nine at quarter time. As I, Isaac Rankin was running amok. He had two goals, four at halftime, and the Crows just looked on. And uh, it had me really regretting putting West Coast below them on the ladder. I've, I've, I've copped a lot of shit for that, and that's fair. Uh, but after that, the Giants flipped the script. Kicked 11 goals to four in the second half. They were really inspired by Tom Green. He had 37 possessions and a goal. Toby Green had four goals and four behinds in his first game as standalone captain. Cornelio continuing to wind back the clock a little bit. Uh, actually, he's not that old. He's younger than me. Uh, but he had 32 possessions, one goal, and 810 meters gained as well. So he was very influential. For the Crows, like I said, Rankin threatened. Great first half. Didn't quite have the end product, which may have cost them. Uh, but Rochelle was also good with three goals and 18 possessions. I just think this is a really good sign from the Giants. They'd started to bleed over the last couple of years. Um, Adam Kingsley gets a win in his first game as coach. I'm still a little bit unsure what to make of them. It'll be interesting to see how they travel to Perth next week. Uh, which is a massive test. The West Coast Eagles are in red-hot form. Uh, the Crows, I think, by contrast, will be frustrated. Great preseason, plenty of optimism, great first half. The fade-out was quite poor. Um, I think they can shake it off, and the Giants kind of have the wood over them a little bit. We saw some good signs, but ultimately, they'll be a bit dirty with the way this game ended. Then Hawthorne took on Essendon in a big rivalry game, and uh, this one did not go the way I expected it. I did say that Essendon would finish higher than Hawthorne this year. In fact, I openly tipped Hawthorne to win by wooden spoon, but I thought on the MCG, we might just see a Hawks upset, and the exact opposite happened. Essendon really stepped up to the plate um, in their first game under Brad Scott as coach, and uh, they made me look really, really silly for tipping an upset in this game. 
The Hawks did get the fast start. I was feeling a little bit smug, and they looked threatening, but the Dons just genuinely overpowered them. They were really inspired by the performance of Archie Perkins. He could be breaking out. I think I did uh, included him in my video of breakout players in the preseason. He had three goals and 20 possessions. And a couple of recruits who uh, were probably not big names, but Sam Wiedemann kicked two goals, which would be pleasing, um, especially when you consider Peter Wright has been uh, ruled out for like two months with a shoulder reco or something ridiculous like that, which is a massive blow to Essendon. He's an incredibly important player for him. Uh, but Will Setterfield also came in first game for the club, 25 possessions and a goal. Those are really pleasing signs for them, I think. And Darcy Parrish, we know how good he is. He had 37 possessions as well and uh, super productive for them. A bright spark for them as well was Tipper coming back into the game as the sub and kicked a last quarter goal um, immediately, which was a nice moment for the Dons. For the Hawks, um, obviously they got smashed and it's bitter against a rival. But again, for the expectations that should be set on the Hawks this year, uh, they can probably shake this off to some extent. Sicily was unsurprisingly very consistent in defense. He had 15 marks and 30 possessions. And uh, James Warper was another player I thought really needed a big year. And he's had a good start to the season with 29 possessions in a good performance as well. But the Hawks' young midfield is very young. I think they battled okay when you look at the midfield stats in this game. Overall, I don't really know what to make of this Essendon performance just yet. Did they just butcher a side that is going to be easy to beat this year? Or is this a sign of things to come? Too early to tell, but it was a good win. Then the final game of the round was a very interesting contest between St Kilda and the Fremantle Footy Club with Ross Lyon's first game as coach against his old club for his other old club. Um, and it was a really tough, tight tussle. It would have been a frustrating game for both sets of fans, particularly Fremantle in the end, as the Saints would keep the last five goals of the game to claim the win by 15 points, I think it was, in the end. I think it's a really great way to kick off the Ross Lyon era, uh, obviously, and uh, a really compelling win against good opposition. Fremantle are a good side. And I don't know if they necessarily played their best footy, but they certainly didn't look terrible, you know. It was a typically strong Fremantle midfield. You know, they had 65 inside 50s, which is quite a lot of inside 50s. As an Eagles fan, that that's massive. It'll take us two to three weeks to get 65 inside 50s. So they won that count, um, but ultimately, avenues to goal proved to be a problem in this game, which is uh, kind of the Achilles heel when you look at that best 22. To kick just seven goals is really disappointing, and they just couldn't finish off some of the better work uh, made down the field. Schultz was the only goal scorer with multiple goals who kicked two. The key forwards in Tabernet and Tracy were held to just one each, and Fife uh, was held goalless and just had the nine possessions in his first proper AFL game in this new full-time forward position. The Saints will be stoked with that, though. Jack Steele was typically one of the best of field with 28 possessions. Machito Owens is uh, really blossoming as this you know, potential gun the Saints have. He's low-key looking very, very good as a forward. He kicked a couple. Mason Wood kicked a couple. Crucial late goals as well. And uh, I also thought Jack Sinclair provided a lot, as he always does. He's an All-Australian. He had 26 possessions off the back flank and provided plenty of run as well. And I guess just in the in the final moments, in the clinching moments, St Kilda just had a little bit more to give. And Fremantle just couldn't buy a goal, unfortunately. So bad loss for Fremantle in the context of, you know, they're potentially pushing for top four. Uh, and this is a winnable away game. But again, we it's, the Saints are a little bit of an unknown quantity. Even I don't really know where to assess them. This is a really good start to the year. So there you have it, guys. That is my thoughts on AFL round one. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with. What did you take out of this round of football? What do you make of Port Adelaide? That's the uh, one of the biggest stories out of this round, I thought, was Port Adelaide's dominance. I'm very, very intrigued by that. As always, guys, really appreciate your support on the channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, and if you don't mind as well, if you use Instagram, give us a follow at True Footy Official as well. Starting to use that a little bit more. Starting to use TikTok a little bit more. Trying to take this a lot more seriously than I have previously. So thank you very much for all the support, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.